How do? My name is Andrew Hancock and I am a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with VMware since their birth in 1998. So that's been a quarter of a century now. I've been working with the VMware product catalog. Some of my close friends say, if you cut Andy in half, it reads VMware like a stick of rock from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I have now written over 130 articles and recorded over 30 hours of VMware vSphere 7 and 8 videos for Experts Exchange and received 40 Expert Exchange awards over the last 11 years working with the Expert Exchange community. I am currently the overall number one point earner in the Hall of Fame. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert program since 2011 and I'm currently a VMware vExpert Pro for the last four years. Welcome to Hancock's VMware Half Hour. Welcome back and I'm going to debunk a myth uh, in this video today. Um, I said in previous videos that I was going to go back and I was going to have a little look at some of the common questions that come up on Exodus Exchange and uh, physical to virtual conversions and virtual to virtual conversions are still very popular. Um, it's probably, I've probably um, written more articles uh, and published more videos on VMware converter and physical to virtual conversions and virtual to virtual conversions than any other topic. And um, 26 years I've been doing this and um, we sort of kind of had hope that one day that everything would be virtual and we wouldn't be doing any more physical to virtual conversions or virtual to virtual conversions. But there are still good reasons to do them and extending um, a legacy platform or extending a hardware platform um, that's failed and the software on it is bound to Windows 7. Organizations not going to upgrade the software or not going to, the, not going to upgrade the hardware like CNC machines and machines in semiconductor industry which are um, connected to machines and in the fab. Um, so there are lots of good reasons to be doing physical to virtual conversions and virtual, con virtual to virtual conversions today. Um, VMware Converter ha has been the product of choice in the VMware world now for many, many years. Uh, however, it, you know, it was discontinued um, before October 2022. Um, yeah, 2019, December 2019, VMware Converter was actually withdrawn because um, some customers had actually basically found um, some security issues with the product. <coughs> Excuse me, 100-day um, cough now. Um, so they found some security issues with the product. So basically VMware decided that that was it. They had withdrawn the product in December 2019. So any product issued before 2019 does have a security issue. Let's just make that completely clear. Um, VMware released 6.4 and now 6.6, .6, um, which was a surprise because everybody really thought that VMware Converter was uh, going away. It was not going to be released again. It was not going to be fixed. But it came back in October 22 uh, with 6.4, and now we're in 6.6 .6 of it. However, I have actually produced videos before um, on how to uh, P to V, Windows XP or Windows 2003 using 6.2 or 6.3. Because there does seem to be an awful lot of urban legend out there about, oh, VMware Converter cannot convert um, a particular product um, or is not supported. Um, <clears throat> and not supported really sort of kind of means that VMware can no longer support the operating system they want to convert because the operating system is no longer supported by the vendor. So if Microsoft are no longer supporting, we'll, in this particular instance, look at Windows 7. If Windows 7 is out of support, Microsoft are no longer supporting Windows 7, then you can expect VMware uh, to support that particular operating system using a product like VMware Converter. The other thing that's been happening over the years as well is that VMware Converter has been subtly changing. The IDEs, the libraries, uh, the secure socket layer has also been changed as well in later operating systems and it's different in earlier operating systems. So that's why you'll find that if you actually basically go and download 6.6 .6 or 6.4, which are currently hosted on the Broadcom website and try to install them on Windows 7, they will not install. So based on that, 
assumptions are made that it's no longer supported, no longer works. Um, so in this particular video, we're going to show you uh, that you can still use VMware vCenter Converter Standalone uh, to P2V a Windows 7 machine um, if you select the right version. Now, I've already peed into our Windows 7 machine here. Um, so Windows 7 Ultimate, just to show you that. Yes, it's got the black background because it's not activated. So therefore, you've got this copy of Windows 7 is not genuine because I can't really be bothered to uh, assign and allocate and activate a key for it, even if it would activate. Um, I have installed um, VMware vCenter Server Standalone 6.1. Um, specifically because any version before 6.3, so 6.2 will install, 6.1 will install, 6.0 will install. However, in 6.2, um, it occurred a, an issue with Peter being to a UNC path, so it fails. So therefore, I've actually dropped back to VMware vCenter Converter 6.1. Now, people will turn around and say, well, where do I get a copy of VMware vCenter Server 6.1? Um, the answer to that really is Google or talk to somebody you know. OK, so again, I've already installed VMware vCenter Converter Standalone actually on the machine I want to P2V um, as is best practice and as is recommended. I'm also going to run it as administrator, which is also best practice. I'm just going to maximize that. I'm going to show you here the actual version I'm using, which just so there's no smoke and mirrors here. This is live in the lab. Uh, VMware vCenter Converter Standalone Server 6.1 build 3410145. Now, yes, this particular product does have a security issue. If you had antivirus running, it's quite likely that the signature uh, of the product would trigger it and it would delete it or stop it or block it. So just bear that in mind. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click Convert Machine. I'm going to say Powered On, this local machine, followed by Next. Um, now, select Destination Type. This is where people get a little bit confused. Uh, VMware Infrastructure Virtual Machine basically means ESXi or vCenter Server. In later versions of ESXi slash vCenter Server, if an ESXi machine now is being managed by vCenter Server, you cannot P2V directly to the ESXi machine. You've actually basically got to specify vCenter Server. So VMware Infrastructure or Virtual Machine. Um, I'm actually in this particular example, I'm not going to P2V it directly to infrastructure because the question actually also came up and turned around and said, that they wanted to use it in VMware Workstation. So I'm going to select that I want a VMware Workstation virtual machine. Um, the VMware hardware product or v VMware virtual machine version, uh, the highest in this particular version of converter is 11. And I think the highest virtual machine version now, I think is 21, something like that. Um, anyway, so that's really irrelevant um, for running all older virtual machine versions are backward compatible with the latest VMware Workstation products. And the latest VMware Workstation free product is 17.5. And I can tell you something about that when we kick off this P2V because it's actually taken me all morning um, to get VMware Workstation Pro running on this particular machine here that I used in the lab to do all the video editing. Um, you know, what I do for you guys and girls. Okay, so. Uh, name, I'm going to specify um, Windows 7, Windows 7. Um, I'm actually going to specify a location on our NAS. And this was the issue that I was having with 6.2. And it is documented if you actually look in the release notes and you look at the bugs that are around. Converter 6.2 does have a UNC issue. So this is why we've dropped back to use 6.1. So I'm going to click Next. Um, I'm not going to change anything in there at all. I'm just going to basically go with stock. I'm not going to change any options. Often, if you start fiddling and doing some customizations, there is more of a possibility that conversion will fail. So I'm just going to click Next. Um, yeah, I'm OK with that. And I'm going to click Finish. Um, the light went off then. I think it was probably doing a firmware upgrade or 
aliens are coming. Um, OK, so... Usually, a VMware conversion will fail at probably about 1% to 3%, uh, and at 98% and above. If it fails between 3% and 98%, usually that's because there is a fault on the disk. So our friendly check disk um, or a product can go through and mark bad blocks or scan, um, mark those bad hard sectors, uh, will cure that for you. Um, so, OK, so we are, we are now running at 6%. Um, and this is just really a data move. I've, I've said this before. This really did, does depend on how fast the hard disk is in your physical machine, how fast the networking is, um, and the data store uh, that you're effectively cloning to, um, how fast that is as well. And some of the older machines that we were doing P2Vs on, of course, you know, didn't have gigabit adapters. They had 100 meg adapters or, God forbid, um, even, even 10 meg adapters. Uh, so... Um, while that's P2Ving in the background, um, and I'll explain a little bit about VMware Workstation and um, a few head red herrings that came uh, popped up. I can't really remember the version of VMware Workstation that was running on this particular machine. Uh, I probably could go back and have a little look at some of the videos that I've done on VMware Workstation. I, know I could probably find it out. But it was probably maybe, it could have been 15.5 or it could have been 16. I can't really remember. Um, but... We all get very blase when we start up VMware Workstation and VMware Workstation pops up and says, oh, there's updates available. And you just go, yeah, OK, yeah, I'll have an update. Thank you very much. Click, 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 updated. And it was updated to VMware Workstation 17.5.2, which is the latest. And then basically was giving me issues saying that um, it wouldn't power on any of the virtual machines because I didn't have the X save function in the CPU. Now, yes, that's correct. Um, I don't have the X save function in the CPU because this is a very old um, Intel i7 Extreme 990X. Uh, cost me an absolute fortune at the time. Thought it was a good idea. Um, all that really happens is the processor gets really, really hot. It's got lots of cores and it's quite fast. Um, that, as I said, this is an old um, rig that I'm using here. I've probably been using this probably for over 12 years now. And um, it's one of my daily drivers that I basically use to do a lot of these videos. Uh, so immediately I, I remember reading about the XSAVE um, function that is now used by VMware Workstation 17.5.2 or, or 17 as well that they started using. I think um, VMware state that VMware Workstation 17 slash 17.5 uh, needs a processor later than 2011. Um, I can't remember exactly really what what age the processor is in this particular machine. I don't know. Um, so because I just blatantly went and clicked update, um, I broke um, my Workstation Pro. Um, so I thought the simple answer really would be to roll back uh, to 16. And oddly, I was still getting the same message telling me about the XA function in, in 16. So I checked the release notes and... The release notes for 16 does state that it supports processors 2011 and later, but it also turns around and says that it also still supports the Westmere uh, generation of processors, which I actually basically think that this i7 is, is based on. Um, so I was still a little bit puzzled really as to why that X save um, issue was coming up. So again, I dropped back to uh, VMware Workstation 15, and I was actually pretty surprised to see that I was still getting the error messages there. Now, VMware Workstation Pro uh, or VMware Workstation 15.5, you know, never used the XA function. So that, that message that was appearing was a complete red herring. I, I don't know why, to be honest with you, VMware Workstation or VMware uh, cannot really actually basically detect the processor before it actually goes off and installs or upgrades your installation, leaving you in a situation whereby it's just broken. And what I actually basically found to be the problem in the end um, was the hypervisor launch option set to off. Don't know why. Um, I set that to auto, um, restarted the machine, and all was well with 15.5. Um, so then I upgraded to 16.5. And that's what I've been doing all morning. Um, you know, it's taken me, well, actually, it's taken me over, let me see, four or five hours 
um, just so I can actually basically run VMware Workstation 16 on this particular machine. Okay, so back to the P2V. Um, so we're at the end of the, of the P2V. Uh, it's at 98%, and it's basically now doing all the reconfiguration, updating the BCD, updating the drive letters, and it's completed. So the question about VMware Converter cannot P to V Windows 7 is wrong. Um, if you use the correct version, so if you use VMware Converter 6, 6.1 or 6.2, you can P to V a Windows 7 machine. Now, just a little word of warning about P to Ving and V to Ving machines or P to Ving, um, as I think we're seeing more of this now. Um, machines are getting to an age, they're, they're, they're getting older, they're failing. People are now wanting to do P to Vs of them. By all means, P to V them, but if your operating system was shipped with the hardware, so when you bought the hardware, when you bought the laptop, when you bought the desktop, it came with Windows 7, and it has a Windows 7 sticker on it that mentions OEM, or it's an OEM version of the software. Although you can P to V, the operating system, you may find that when you actually start it up in a virtual machine that it fails to activate and it may not function. And that isn't a issue that isn't a technical issue with p2v um, that's a technical issue with the licensing because oem licenses uh, my understanding of an oem license is it's not supposed to move hardware okay so uh, with that um, i'm going to drag um, this copy of our virtual machine off our nas in a, for a minute hang on Okay, so all I've done is um, I've copied uh, that Windows 7 VM that I've converted um, off the NAS uh, locally. I've just done file open and uh, I'm just going to power it on. And this is the first time that I'm powering it on in. Okay, so complaining about a SATA device. Yeah, okay, not a problem. Um, and. Okay, so there's our, uh, it's telling me about VMware tools, uh, remind me later. Um, and that's starting Windows 7. Um, if you'd got a blue screen just before then, um, with an inaccessible boot disk, um, then that's because you've got the wrong storage driver. So, okay, just to, to prove that it is the same machine I'll log in. That's telling me to activate now. I'm not going to activate now. Sorry. And if I run VMware Converter again, um, and this is exactly what you'd actually expect, that as it's now a virtual machine, it's actually basically obviously going off and installing drivers. So that's it. Um, thanks so much for joining me in this video um, to sort of kind of prove and answer a question that um, VMware um, converter standalone, VMware vCenter converter standalone um, can P2V, V2V, a Windows 7 machine if you select the right version. Um, and in my tests, that 6.0, 6.1, 6 6.2 caveat, if you're going to P2V to a UNC path, um, then you're going to get a problem because there's that UNC bug. So avoid maybe 6.2. 6.0, 6.1 will P to V um, a Windows 7 machine. And to answer the second part of that question uh, about Windows 7 doesn't work in VMware Workstation, um, well, I think really the, the proof is in the demonstration and the pudding there. So it's now basically done all its plug and play so I'm just going to say restart and that will shut down and restart with all the drivers correctly okay so thanks so much for joining me for um, another P to V um, session uh, with Windows 7 um, it's um, it's fascinating really to sort of kind of roll back and go back in time as I've been doing this for a very very long time um, so um, it's quite fascinating really to sort of kind of start going back in time to these uh, situations and and, um, and doing them again 
anyway, so uh, come back and have a little look at the next videos. Uh, when I think we're probably going to have a little look at, um, there was a couple of questions I saw on Experts Exchange about VMware vCenter server and root passwords and administrator at local host passwords as well and, um, and resetting them. So I think we're going to have a little look at that in the, uh, in the next video. So once again, I hope you like the new circle up here and, uh, and cheers, uh, to, to my friend Scott Fell at Loco. I hope you can see that, uh, which covers my, um, my soft drink my Pepsi Max, very, very well. So all the best, Scott. Anyway, all the best now, and thanks very much for watching, and, uh, and goodbye.